music fans out there, thanks so much for tuning into this episode of Coda Country Chats. On today's episode, we have Jay Allen. How are you today, Jay? I'm feeling blessed today that I get to talk to you. How are you today? I'm doing so well, and I thank you so much for, for coming on the show. I would love to talk to you a little bit about your recent release to country radio, No Present Like the Time. Um, a nice little play on words out there for the listeners who are listening. No time like the present, no present like the time. I saw that you also released this back in uh, December of 22. So tell me the journey, I guess, of finally getting this hit to country radio. Yeah, so super, super long story short, I'll summarize. <laughs> I lost my mother to what's called early onset Alzheimer's. You know, I moved to Nashville over 10 years ago. Like every everyone that has a little dream in their heart, you know, I was just doing what everyone else did, you know, writing songs to get, you know, a deal, to get some momentum, to try to get out on the road, to hopefully someday <laughs> get on the radio. And um, that very quickly seemed pretty empty to me. I remember just like laying my head down at night and feeling like I was missing something really big. Um, and then mm -hmm. my mom got sick. Um, they call it early onset uh, Alzheimer's because she was so young. It's very rare to get it at that age. She was 51. It took her life in two years and nine months. Um, wow. So I had a heartbreak. I just, you know, I wrote a song about it. It wasn't for anyone but myself and my mother and my family. And, uh, just the way that I believe God works. I was signed at Sony at the time. And um, the head publisher there, he called me a couple of days later after we turned in blank stairs and he said, Jay, you don't know this, but I'm sitting in my office and I'm crying. So I know what this song is about. He said, I lost my dad to Alzheimer's and uh, I was his caregiver for the last five years of his life. He said, it's something he never really talked about. Um, but he said, make me a promise today, son. He said, um, if you promise that we can give every dime that we make off this song back towards the fight against Alzheimer's, I promise to get it in front of some very important people. So that's what happened. Uh, before I knew it, um, we were on a stage and uh, in my home state of Iowa, I was opening up for Jake Owen and uh, I'd been, I'd gotten a, you know, uh, a deal with William Morris and I was touring full time and I was always share this song on stage at the end of our set. Um, but I got to the point where, you, you know, you can speak to people and try to teach them something until you're blue in the face. Um, I thought, what better way to actually bring this home than to show them? So we decided yeah. to bring my mom on stage and, um, a huge crowd, you know, people are there to party and have some beers and, um, which we brought that. And then at the end, I just like, I brought mom on stage. I wrapped her arms around me and I wrapped my arms around her and told the story and everyone shut up and they listened. And the guy took a video, he put it on his Facebook page and it turned into a couple of videos that got like 600 million views and just said yes to everything since partnered with the national Alzheimer's association and uh, got to raise my head last year and realized we've helped raise over a hundred million bucks to help fighting against Alzheimer's, which is wow. A really cool feeling to know that, you know, my mother, who was the most selfless person in the world that I've ever met, wanted no attention on herself. Her life has now helped do so much good in the world. You know, so um got to a point where um I'd been getting phone calls from NBC's The Voice every single year. And wow. I was like, I don't want to do this. <laughs> so, <laughs> I would politely decline. They were not happy that I kept politely declining because they're a storyline <laughs> focused show, right? They want a story. Mm -hmm for that dramatic effect for ratings, which I totally get it. I just never saw myself as that guy until last year right. they called me. I thought, you know what, what better way to put more attention on what I've been trying to do than to go on The Voice. Mm -hmm. So they let me sing that song, Blank Stairs, and um, they let me share that story in such a beautiful way that I could have never expressed myself. And not a lot of people know this, but when you're on The Voice, when you're filming, they trap you in a hotel room for like two and a half months. You're not allowed oh to leave. For us, like COVID, it's crazy on the West Coast. So. Mm -hmm. While we were filming, they only let us out of our rooms for more than 10 minutes per day. And uh, so, yeah, that obviously was not fun. And then I crazy. realized, <laughs> yeah, very crazy, you know, and I'm a grown man. So I'm married to my, you know, we just celebrated our one year wedding anniversary. We were in, just engaged at the time. We were planning a wedding. I'm like, well, I got to see my fiance. So yeah. I'm married to Kylie Morgan. So we mm -hmm. actually got her a uh, short blonde a wig off of Amazon <laughs> snuck her in the hotel room just so we could see each other. But during that time, I started to think, you know, I'll probably never get this time alone again, uh, two and a half months, um, just to be alone. I'm always surrounded by people mm -hmm. I'm on the road. So how about I just make the most out of it? So um, I started talking to, a, you know, a buddy of mine, a co-writer about this idea, you know, like basically the follow up to blank stairs. And it was a positive thing. If I if I believe that I have a mother in heaven that loves me, she probably wants me to be happy. And she probably wants the yeah. best for me. Um, so we all know that phrase. There's no time like the present. 
we thought, how about there's no present like the time, time is a gift, you know? So I brought that back to my co-writers. We wrote this concept and, uh, you know, I signed a record deal after coming off the show and um, a year later, that's the song. They're like, Jay, you, you know, you have a, a story to tell. You have a message that's been helping the world. Let's continue that and utilize country radio to do it. So no present like the time seemed like the perfect fit and the right time. So, yes, definitely. Yeah. Well, and I'm going to get a little personal with you since you got a little personal with me. Uh, my mom passed away a year and a half ago now. Um, she had Parkinson's and then developed Louis body dementia. And so hearing blank stares, I completely understand um, where you're coming from there. And I'm so glad that you kind of said that the, the right of no present like the time was kind of like the, the second edition almost, or, or like a, like a, a sequel, if you, if you will, of, of blank stares, because it's true. It's, it's so important to think about how we all have such a limited amount of time on this earth. And, um, I thank you for sharing that story because it's, um, I don't want to say we're exactly related like that, but it's, it's nice to kind of have somebody who, who's been through that experience too. Um, yeah. wow. So, yeah. Yeah. I'm mm -hmm. sorry. You've Tough had stuff. Experience. It's, uh, yeah, but that, you know, it's, it's real life, you know, bigger picture things. It's really easy just to like walk through life. Like nothing like this is ever going to happen to any of us, you know, but I think we have a choice, um, as humans, how, how do we respond to our loss? And we have mm -hmm. the opportunity to turn something that's really painful into something really beautiful, you know, to honor the people that we've lost, to find community, to help share a message. To, and, you know, especially about a disease that's really hard to talk about. Alzheimer's yeah. specifically is the sixth leading cause of death in the world. People don't want to talk about death until it happens to them, you know, so. It's true, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it's really yeah. important, you know, like I've kind of taken some pride in like making, talking about your sadness cool. So that is cool. Talk about it. That's, that's called being human, you know, and, um. But right now, our conversation, who knows how many people it's going to help, you know, make feel that they're not alone. So this is awesome. Thank you for creating this outlet for people to listen and feel connected and, you know, know that, you know, we're not all going through this alone, you know. That's so true. And I think, you know, having done a, a few episodes of this and, and kind of talking to different artists, like it's it's incredible to, to hear how the different stories that everybody brings to these episodes, like kind of intertwine and uh, in some way or another. And, you know, like you were saying earlier, when you moved to Nashville, which is, you know, almost 10 years ago now, right? Is that yeah. about the timeline? Yeah. Yeah. We're, um, yeah, we're, we're over 10 years. Yep. So oh my I, feel gosh. Every, I feel every <laughs> second of 10 years. Yeah. <laughs> well, and you know, they keep calling it a 10 year town, but you know, I feel like that, kind of reinvents itself every every year it's not even <laughs> it doesn't become a 10-year town i feel like there's always like something new that that you know you almost like have to i guess bring a new set of songs new set of tour dates new set of something that that refreshes that 10 years almost um so yeah okay talking a little bit about um the alzheimer's association and the songs that you put out with that um, you talked a little bit about the voice too. How long was your, was your stint on the voice? How long did yeah. you perform with them? Yeah. So when I, when I finally said yes, I was very, and I don't think they liked this. I was very like clear with them that I did not want to go. I did not want to go all the way. Um, yeah. uh, you know, now that I'm not on the show and, you know, I think a lot of artists have shared this, like there's, you know, once you get to the lives portion, you're contractually bound to them for a year mm -hmm. following the show which oh, was not okay. my plan at all. You know, I wanted to, I had a plan going in, a plan going out. So I would even share that like in like interviews with them, you know, which I don't think they ended up airing, but I was just like, <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to go to the lives. Like I want to get off this show and go get a record deal and like continue yeah. my journey and go help people with my music. And I can't do that mm -hmm. if I'm tied to a contract. So, um, Makes two sense. people, got, two people got, two people got record deals that came off the show. Uh, well, three people, um, the kid that won, um, mm -hmm. he had like a one year development deal. Um, uh, my friend Morgan miles got an independent record deal out of LA yeah. and then I got a record deal. Um, I, I left the show, got kicked off at top, like top 36. So basically long story, what happened is, um, they screwed with me and I loved it cause I wanted off at this point anyways. Uh, but they have, <laughs> they have my wife in the crowd and they surprised me and literally spotlighted her, had her sitting right behind Gwen. 
And so when I get to the <laughs> second chorus of, you know, Prayed For You by my buddy Matt Stowe, which is a, a friend <laughs> of mine now, um, I look up and they spotlighted my wife and I was like, I'm singing Prayed For You, one of my favorite songs about my <laughs> wife to my wife. And I just like stuttered for words and they made this whole dramatic moment out of it. And it was perfect. I, what they didn't show is when I walked off the stage, um, I literally ran off with my hands up. I was so pumped, ran out the door. Blake Shelton came chasing after me and I was already gone. <laughs> so, <laughs> Uh, but it was cool later on. I got to see the I got to see the human side of Blake and Gwen. They actually came to my last show of the year last year and surprised me and so cool. Brought, brought me on stage and Tisha Mingo and introduced me. So um, it was nothing but a beautiful experience. And like I said, got a, a really unique deal coming off the show. A friend of mine who I'd made friends with before I even had a record deal. He uh, he runs this huge company. It's called One RPM. And they uh, yeah. they have like thirty six offices worldwide. And they started a record label in Nashville. Him and I became friends years ago. Um, but when I came off the show, he called me and he said, Jay, uh, I'm coming to Nashville just to see you. Will you stop by the house and have a glass of wine with me? I said, okay. And uh, sat down and he just said, I want to offer you this really unique situation, and whatever it takes to help you succeed. And, and he's like, I really like that song, No Present Like the Time. <laughs> so, uh, that's kind of where, where it started. You know, it's just. It's wild what's happened because, uh, you know, I kind of got to press, press the refresh button. You know, you said every year you got to kind of, you know, refresh the 10 years and kind of get a yeah. re redo. And that was my redo on Nashville and on my career. So I went on The Voice and I never thought I'd say that, but that's helped me, you know, you know, just kind of bring my head up for water and realize that I am an artist, that I have, you know, I have gifts to offer the world and I'm going to utilize them with my best potential. That's right. And since your time on The Voice uh, back last September, you've released a lot of other singles then, too. Um, one of my favorite being the summertime anthem, Jello Shot. <laughs> and I know this is like something completely off script, um, yeah. but it's something also very different from a lot of the other songs in your catalog. Tell me, um, tell me a little bit about what inspired the right for that. <laughs> Yeah, so I wrote Jello Shot like five years ago. You know, like I, I've been I've been writing in Nashville since I got here. And when I first got my first publishing deal, it was with a little company called NV2 Entertainment. Now they've had a ton of success, but I was the first songwriter that they signed. I was gung ho. Like I lived on Music Row. I wrote two songs a day every day for a couple wow. of years. And um, mm -hmm. you know, back then it was like I was just you know writing fun music. You know, I'm the dude that's covered in tattoos. I have a five piece band. Like I'm very influenced by. Those bands like Bush and Three Doors Down and Matchbox 20. Our show is very like alternative rock meets country. It's a very fun, yeah. like two hour, high energy, guitar driven show. Like it's a rock show. But mm -hmm. then I have all these songs, you know, that are from my heart that have continued to impact people. So I'm going to keep releasing music like that. And that's a big part of my show and what I do. But, you know, yeah. I wanted to start the label asked me when I signed, they're like, you have all these heartfelt songs. You're always going to be known for that. We love you for that. But like, what's the most fun song you've ever written? And so as a joke, I was like, well, I got this song called Jello Shot. And they're like, let's make a music video. I was like, let's make a music video. <laughs> okay. So uh, my manager, she literally put me in a kiddie pool. She dressed me up in this really nice black tux, put me in a kiddie <laughs> pool. And she filled it with 500 Jello Shots. And that's kind of the theme of the whole music. It's just like complete silliness and partying with all my friends on a lake. And it's nuts. And we play that sh we play that song at every show. And it's so fun. Like people cannot help. I don't care whatever happens with that song. People, if they've never heard it, they cannot help but dance. We just played this show in uh, Bakersfield, California. And uh, I literally jumped off the stage and was dancing with these old ladies. It was the funniest thing. So I'm so glad you brought it up. <laughs> well, and then and then Kyle Kylie was in the music video too, wasn't she? Yeah, oh, or was yeah. that another music video? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Any, any chance I can get to have her in a video, I'm gonna have her in a video. So. Oh, that's so fun. Well, okay. And then I also saw that y'all traveled to Hawaii recently, right? Probably to celebrate your anniversary. Yeah. So um, I, I'm really hard to surprise just because I, <laughs> you know, Kylie, just, she, she hates. I'm always so aware and like it, it's impossible to surprise me. But she finally got me. Uh, we had made friends with this gal. She's basically an event coordinator, and um, mm -hmm. he invited us to come to uh, Kapalua, Maui, Hawaii, to put mm -hmm. on a charity benefit for the victims of the fires there that happened in August. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. Kylie was like, well, that's perfect. It's our one-year anniversary during that time. She goes, oh, my gosh. She goes, how about we give you a trip to Hawaii in exchange for you playing this show? And Kylie said yes, and then she surprised me with it. So it Aww. was yeah. 
it's one of those things I'm just like, only God could have made that happen. It was so beautiful. We created so many relationships and got to know the locals. And, you know, like that just happened in August and people already forgot, like a lot of Maui, like lost all their homes and loved ones. So it was cool to be there and, and you know, expand what I've learned as a philanthropist, like putting that towards, you know, a, a disease now putting it towards other things, you know? So mm -hmm. that was a cool experience. Definitely. And yeah. I, I'm glad to know about the event um, just because I don't know. I, like you said, it's not something that was like easily forgotten, but still, I, you know, if you're not over there and you don't get to see the damage that's done every day, I mean, I don't know. Wow. That's amazing that you guys were able to participate in that and that you also yeah. got to have a trip and be with each other. Do you find that it's um, tricky to schedule time together with your busy schedules? Yeah, so like I like Kylie and I came here together, and then she had to leave without me. You know, um, <laughs> that's just that's kind of like our our life that we chose, though. And it works for us. You know, it's not always mm -hmm. easy, but you know, we joke and say we high five in airports. You know, like so now, like <laughs> in we, passing, we find ways to like how do we combine our work and our personal life together. So like literally, like she has she's on tour with Old Dominion. She's like on her last run or second to last run with him. So she's going through the Midwest. So I was like, she's stopping through Des Moines. So I was like, how about we go a couple of days early and see family and spend time together. So that's what we're doing tomorrow. Yeah. We're literally hopping on a plane and go spend time with family, spend some time together. And then I'm going to stay with her for a show before I have to go do radio stuff all weekend. So you just, we find ways. It's like a, every time we're together, it's like a first date again. So uh -huh. it works for us. Yeah. Yeah. All that like catching up and like that, what I'm going to call like a re-entry period when you guys see each other and you're like, oh, okay, we're back together now. Um, I love yep. that. Tell yep. me uh, a little bit about your tour that you have coming up in February. Um, yep. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about the stops that you have along the way there. Yeah. So um, I'm trying to be like, I'm trying to like keep some mystique about it. So we just announced there's, there's 20 cities. So we've announced the first 20 cities. Wow. Um, we're looking at our goal has been 41 cities. My, uh, my, I call it my angel number is 42. So I would love to land on 42 cities um, mm -hmm. from February 1st to like June 8th. Um, wow. So we okay. can just uh, announce the first half. Um, and I, everything that I do, um, even, you know, if it's, you know, and fun, I want to somehow involve something that's bigger than me. So we actually uh, made friends with a gal in Kansas City. Um, she started showing cognitive cognitive signs of uh dementia and mm -hmm. she found a way to change her alter her lifestyle to reverse it um which wow. is a very rare thing and there's lots of stories like that but people have a hard, hard time sharing it's uh, it, unfortunately alzheimer's and this disease and dementia there there's politics behind it and there's people out there that make that have gain and financial gain off of this disease so those stories mm -hmm. get kind of put out they get squelched um i want to share her story so she has a, um, a foundation called the Night of Hope. In June, she invited us to come perform in uh, Kansas City at her Night of Hope gala. My manager and I thought, well, how about we make a whole tour out of that and call it the Night of Hope Tour? And awesome. So we partnered with her. Her foundation is sponsoring it. And we're going to, like I said, hopefully do about 42 dates and uh, travel all over the country. And uh, now even trying to get back to the UK and make that part of it. When was your last trip to the UK? Tell me about um, that. Yeah, we went to the UK a couple months ago. Um, um, I, I, I brought on a manager in March this last year, and um, she is the missing piece to my puzzle. I literally like prayed for her, like down to her age and what she looks like and the type of personality, and God provided eventually. Ten years mm -hmm. later, um, <laughs> she is like she is one of those people who she doesn't sleep. I mean, I'll get a text from her at you know midnight, and then get a text from her again at you know, seven in the morning, she just doesn't stop for me. And she's created so many beautiful opportunities, taking what, you know, God's built with me and exemplified it. So she created an opportunity for us to go tour the UK. So we went over there and played six shows in 11 days, did a bunch of PR stuff. And they actually started playing us on the BBC, the, the country radio station over there. So, wow. yeah, so we're trying to go back again. I, I would, uh, I'm putting that out in the world that it's happening. So. That's amazing. And shout out to your manager, because, I mean, we all need some love like that, don't we? Yeah, shout out to <laughs> Stacy. 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 Yeah. Awesome. Oh, my gosh. So tell me, okay, before we hop off today, um, I just want to thank you for, for sharing your story and talking to me all about your 
what you stand for, what you believe in, how you want to help other people. Um, is there an easy way or like a link or something that we could go to um, if the listeners out there want to contribute to what you have going on, any kind of campaign or anything like that that you'd like to shout out for us? Yeah, so my website is jallenofficial.com. You can find everything there. Um, I'm now pointing people to thenightofhope.com. Um, that's really our biggest mission right now is how can we show people and teach people how to live their life right now, whether that's, you know, like your diet, exercise, socializing, these brain engagement things to make sure that you live a long and healthy life and don't get dementia. And then also always ALZ.org. I partnered with the National Alzheimer's Association years ago, and uh, we've accomplished a lot of good together. So ALZ.org is another one as well. Wow. Thank you so much, Jay, for one, coming on the show, and two, for being such an inspiration and just being an awesome artist and being an artist that's not only working for you and, and, and building you a career, but also being an artist for others, even when they, you know, can't be artists for themselves or even just, you know, have a voice for themselves. It's very, very inspirational to talk to you. That's sweet of you. Well, thank you for creating this outlet again, for allowing people like us to share our stories and sharing your stories as well. You're creating a safe place for people. And that's a, that's bigger than life. You're doing a, a beautiful <laughs> thing. So thank you for having me. Well, thank you. I just love to talk. That's part of it. So, <laughs> Oh my gosh. You're good at <laughs> thank it. You. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Country fans out there, make sure you check out jallenofficial.com, uh, the night, uh, nightofhope.com for any more information that you have on the Alzheimer's Association and the events for dementia. Um, make sure you check out any events that Jay Allen has coming up in your area, and we hope to follow along and see more from your career, Jay. Thank you, Lee. Have a blessed day. It was awesome Thank talking you. to you. Awesome talking to you. Bye. Have a good one.